Well, geopolitical risk also uh, always an outstanding concern for all markets, and this week is a big one. There are a number of summits with world leaders uh, taking place in New York. We had the Climate Summit, the annual U.N. General Assembly, uh, the United Nations Security Council meeting, and out in Pittsburgh beginning today, uh, we have the G20. So what are some of the key issues dominating discussions? George Friedman, he's the CEO of Stratfor, joins us now live from Austin, Texas. Uh, clearly, nuclear disarmament at the top of President Obama's agenda. Um, he addressed that issue today once again. George, last time we had you you said September is crisis month here. Where do you think we stand? Well, we're right on the edge of a crisis. Uh, the issue is that we guarantee the Israelis, the United States guarantee the Israelis, crippling sanctions. The, China, the crippling sanctions are cutting off gasoline sales to Iran that imports 40% of it. The Chinese are shipping gasoline to the Iranians. And the Russians, in spite of what they said yesterday, the UN that seemed conciliatory haven't committed themselves to anything. So there are going to be no crippling sanctions, and all eyes are going to be on Israel. Uh, we heard from uh, Russia's ambassador to the United Nations on this program, and he said uh, no, no sanctions on the table when it comes to uh, Russia's point of view. You point out something really interesting here. People think of Iran, they think of the oil resources, they don't necessarily realize what you point out is really an Achilles heel for them, which is that to get gasoline that they can use, they need to import refined product. This is really a trade linkage here that, that you're highlighting as potentially a place that political pressure could focus on. Well, that is the Achilles heel, as you said. That is the one place that you can really break the Iranians. If they don't get that 40% oil of uh, gasoline, they're in big trouble. The problem the United States has is the Russians can supply all they need via the rail system. We've studied their rail system. Uh, there's no question they can keep the Iranians afloat. The Chinese surprised everybody by starting to massively increase sh shipments into Iran, probably in retaliation for the tire tariffs that we threw on them. I think we're looking at a situation where both the Russians and the Chinese are going to cripple sanctions which means that the diplomatic process has collapsed. There mm -hmm. is no diplomatic way to get rid of those nuclear weapons, and that leaves only the military option. Uh, we also just had on screen a list of the companies um, through which Iran gets the bulk of their gasoline supply, among them Vital, a Swiss firm, Total, uh, a French firm or CEO on this program earlier this week, Reliance Industries out of India. What kind of pressure on the financial front is, is happening, particularly with some of these corporations, that we might not be hearing about at summits like the G20? Well, there's talk of pressure, but pressure has to be concerted. And um, pressure is pointless on these companies if all that's going to happen is that Russian and Chinese firms are going to take their place. So the real problem here is that the plan, which was to sanction companies that sell uh, gasoline to Iran, is in the ditch. If the Russians and the Chinese are going to go ahead and do it themselves, it really doesn't matter what we do with these companies. Wow. When you um, talk about uh, Israel here and a promise made in regard to sanctions, what does that leave open here uh, when it comes to potentials here? If sanctions aren't necessarily on the table, when you say turning to other options, what are you talking about? We're talking about military options. Oh, well, you're talking about position... invasions there? I mean, those are strong, strong terms. Well, certainly airstrikes against uh, Iranian nuclear facilities. The, Iranian, the Israelis have made it very clear that they can't live in a region where Iran has nuclear weapons. They were prepared to let the diplomatic process and sanctions take their route. They've made it very clear they're not prepared to live with just having them build it. Uh, Netanyahu went on a secret mission to Moscow, not very secret any longer. Uh, he has been to Washington, where he thinks, at least, that he's gotten assurances from the Obama administration that there would be crippling sanctions and that if there isn't, other steps would be taken. So we really are, and it's not clear that it's going to happen, but we really are moving toward a potential military confrontation. Mm -hmm. Because if these sanctions don't happen, the Israelis are going to do something.
When we talk about uh, nuclear disarmament in regard to Iran, um, you know, there are some who say in terms of the military ca capabilities of Iran, it's just not realistic to say that they could uh, truly threaten the United States. You pointed out last time you were on your program, you were specifically concerned about what might be happening in the Strait of Hormuz. Well, the Iranians have a military counter option if they're attacked. And they have said very publicly this is what they're going to do. They're going to mine the Straits of Hormuz and use their anti-ship missiles against tankers in the Persian Gulf. They're also going to mine ports on the western coast of the Persian Gulf. The intention of the Iranians is that if they're attacked, they're going to try to shut down the flow of oil out of the Straits of Hormuz. It'll hurt them, but in their view, it is the only thing that will get the Europeans and others to intervene against Israel mm -hmm. to keep them from doing this. All right. Thank you so much, George Friedman, CEO of Stratfor, uh, giving us some perspective.